Yo, what's going on, guys? Koi here. Today, we're going to be talking about anime. I mean, oh, my bad. Dragon Ball, uh, Dragon Ball Project Multi. And we're going to be talking about the card system. And the card system is definitely interesting. I would say that the there's three levels of cards. The three levels of cards are uh, not exactly better or worse whenever you get from like level one to level three, more along the lines of just bonuses. And some are better than others. Some are way better than others. Some are far more useful than others. But I think there's a clear meta and we're going to be talking about that as we kind of get through the cards right here. So we're going to talk about level one cards. I have this gameplay that I kind of showed off. And in this gameplay, we have the level one cards to kind of like talk about. So we're going to start with uh, Thanks, God of Destruction. Uh, reduces the cooldown of uh, school, uh, what do you call it, time for every skill used. After using a skill in a God of Destruction area, of course. So I don't know how good these cooldowns are, but this is more of a defensive type build for, uh, I would say, like a lot of the characters. Now, this doesn't really seem like the greatest thing in the world. And the reason I say that, right, is because there's better cards in this level one pack compared to uh, this one by itself. Because this one is good, don't get me wrong. It's just that this one's just not the craziest of all the cards. There's better cards. All right, the next one is Strategic Escape. Uh, boosts mo uh, movement speed. Now, this one back, when your back is turned to a nearby enemy hero, you actually could get out of situations much faster. Uh, this card is actually a lot more meta, but the reason I say that is because it's more of like for hit and run tactics. Like, uh, for instance, Android 18, who definitely needs to be in and out of combat in order to make sure that, because since she's the squishiest of all the heroes, that she doesn't get beat up too much, and that squishiness could be her downfall. But I also say that this is also less strategic than just using damage cards and finishing the battle or using defensive cards because of the fact that Android 18 uh, and a lot of other characters have rushdown moves or distance moves that could stop you from running away in total. So is this the most prevalent? I don't think so out of all the level one cards. All right. Uh, next one. Build up. Now, this one can raise defense up, can be raised up 20 times. Every KO, every two KOs, or assists on enemy NPCs. Now, this one is actually very, very good. If you're running something like Majin Buu, and you need to stay alive a lot longer, and you know you're not going to be doing as much damage, of course, there's still better options, but this card is very, very important for those who just plan on staying alive. Gohan is one of the char characters that could definitely benefit from this because his entire thing is building up and being the best support, staying on top of things. Uh, Zamasu, uh, of course, there's better cards for Zamasu, but I think that build-up is definitely one of the more scarier cards that you could use on the field, especially if you already do a lot of damage like Goku, Zamasu, uh, Vegeta. This just makes you an absolute tank. Okay, next we're going to be talking about Too Easy. Too Easy uh, gives life uh, for every three seconds. Uh, this is like a nice one, I would say. Uh, can only be activated for every 30 seconds, though. So when taking damage that brings your life uh, to 50% of max or lower, uh, you'll start to slowly regen. Now, this is probably one of the weaker cards next to... Thanks, God of Destruction, because of the fact that Too Easy is just like a pretty mediocre card at best. I wouldn't say that it's the craziest of the cards. I would say that it's like, okay. And for something that is supposed to give life, it doesn't give a lot. And for 30 seconds, it's kind of like a worse version of Zamasu's uh, defensive perk. So we're just going to go ahead and get moving. Now, over here, Super Snowball, all attacks, uh, all attack up can raise the attack up to 10 times. You lose this if you get KO'd. Now, this snowball effect is probably the strongest card in the level one set next to build up because snowball, super snowball actually allows you, right? To play so aggressively to once you actually get your 10 kills, you have incredibly high damage in the end game. 
and you will not be able to be stopped unless you are just squishy in general. But this, it's either take snowball or take build up so far. Now for the last one, we have flash of lightning. Enemy heroes attacked within two seconds have an additional energy damage applied. Uh, this is a bonus damage that you can use every single time you use Vanish Step. So this is kind of nice, but with the cooldown that Vanish Step has, I think you'd rather have way more aggressive approach like Snowball and build up than having to run this and rely on your Vanish Step to attack when your Vanish Step is supposed to be the only thing that you use in order to play a defensively. All right. So next we're going to be talking about the next one which is the next row of level two cards now. Okay. So first one is, uh, oh, my bad. Again, again, again. Okay. Now the first one is Giant Slayer. Uh, we're just going to get to that point once more. Okay. Now Giant Slayer boosts the damage dealt to a target of uh, for the remainder of battle. More damage is dealt depending on the target's max life. What this means is land an attack on an enemy hero when their life is 80% or higher and you do bonus damage. This is probably the weaker out of most of the offensive cards in the game because this relies on you doing early game damage uh, very quickly off rip. But the only downside with this is yes, but the other card is much better than this. Prepare to die boosts damage slightly on the enemy hero until the end of the confrontation. Now what this is, it is land an attack on an enemy hero with their life less than 50% or lower. This is an execution card. So if you're already doing a lot of damage, this is just gonna force them to like take even more damage towards the end of the bout. And they might not even survive due to the fact that they won't be expecting the massive boost in damage as they're already low. Very, very scary card. Solid Barrier. Gained a barrier that reduces damage from enemy heroes. Uh, don't take damage from enemy heroes for 10 seconds. Uh, this is a nice barrier effect, and this is uh, not too bad, but I don't think that there's a character, or I don't think that the play style in this game is going to, like, this is like if you want to survive nukes, but I don't think anyone has nukes in this game. I really don't. I think that if you're going to block... Um, how do you say something like the spirit bomb? You're still going to get hit if you're going to stay in there for too long. Uh, if you're going to block something like a special beam cannon, this is very strong against that. Uh, but after that, the rest of this is just terrible. You know what I mean? It just is useless after that. Because after that, then the confrontation just gets a lot stronger. Okay. Uh, reduce damage uh, a set amount per hit. This is just more bonus defense. If your character is already doing a lot of damage like Zamasu or Vegeta, this is kind of like the build that you kind of want to go for. Uh, this one and the other one where you just stack defense. This is just on that road to being the tankiest character and staying alive during most of the bouts playing defensively. Uh, Art of Decoy. Big boost to movement speed and reduces vanishing step. Now this one is probably the most impressive one whenever it comes down to movement because of the fact that uh, whenever you do get obstructed, get obstructed by an enemy hero, this does activate and this gives you much more uh, survivability. If you're a character like Android 18, this is super, super key to staying alive. And this is just one of those cards that's going to be very useful to more less tanky characters and more offensive characters. All right. Because, you know, those technical characters can really ruin your game very quickly. Epic Hunter. Uh, boost the damage to boss and super bosses. Uh, and reduce the damage to enemy heroes for four seconds. Now, what this means is it's pretty much like... Uh, the ability to defeat bosses and super bosses. This is the PVE card. So this is very, very useful. Let's say if you're someone like Piccolo, Gohan, Goku, uh, someone who's just there to like take on bosses and stuff like that, to play offensively towards defeating uh, bosses and super bosses uh, and trying to get the kill as quickly as possible because this is super useful for that. Now we're going to go ahead and dip into the next area, which is... Uh, level three cards. One second. All right. 
Uh, should be close. Oh, we already picked it. Oh, my bad. Hang on. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. It's not going to look like, like what I'm looking at on your screen. It's going to look a lot better. It's just that I'm trying to get to the card and then put it on the screen during the match. So we got, uh, is it going to start off with that one? Okay, yeah. So Pursuer deals energy damage to target, boosts your speed for 7.5 seconds. If you are a character like Piccolo, Gohan, uh, Krillin, energy damage is going to be very key. Pursuer is going to be your end game card. And why this is the case is because a lot of these energy blast type characters like Vegeta, uh, Piccolo, Krillin, Gohan, they spam a lot of their attacks. So what this means is land, an, uh, land attacks on the enemy hero with two skills within two seconds and trigger this bonus damage that could be activated multiple times. And you could also stay out of the way of other like really, really strong contenders. And this is just that end game energy card for you guys. Berserker. Now, this is the end game physical card for end game physical people. Land three rush attacks in a row. Do a bunch of bonus damage. It is ridiculously good. We're talking about like doing some ridiculous end game damage. And it is definitely on the perfect card for the end game bruiser. Guardian Angel. Uh, take, some uh, take some of the allies damage for them. Damage taken reduces, uh, you know, nearby allies whenever they take damage. Uh, they will, you will end up taking some of that damage for them. Very, very good card to keep your, your survivability up for characters like Android 18 and stuff like that. All right. Uh, let's see. And then we're going to be talking about defense step reduces damage taken from super attacks for three seconds. So this is, this is just a better version of barrier. Now, what this does is it allows you to pretty much take a fat reduction of all super attack damage after using a, va a vanishing step. If you feel like you're just kind of being a solo player like Android 18 or Goku or anything like that, this is maybe the kind of the route that you want to go if you already think you're doing enough damage. But, of course, this like could literally just be situational. And if you think like you're going to get spammed by someone like a special beam cannon or anything like that, then this is kind of the way to get out of it. Or Zamasu's trying to lock you down, this is probably the way to get out of it as well. All right. Sneak attack greatly reduces the cooldown for every skill landed. Now, what this is, this is for those skill spammers like Piccolo, uh, for um, Krillin, Gohan, stuff like that. Whenever you land like skills, like su except for super attacks, every single time you land a skill uh, uh, on an enemy hero after three seconds of being discovered, uh, then you're going to get massive cooldown reductions. It's actually really, really good. But you have to sneak attack. If you already sneak attack, then that's kind of like it. Honestly, I think it's a little weaker than just straight up going for a Pursuer or Berserker. I think that this is more along the lines of what you kind of want to go for later. If you feel like you're playing more of a solo act and you play more strategically, then maybe, maybe. It really depends on you. Uh, limit Breaking Jump lets you, uh, lets you vanish step one more time uh, before its cooldown ends. Uh, it applies no skills. Uh, it applies no skills for one second. Adds five seconds to cooldown. Now this is really really nice, but it does add like more seconds to the cooldown. I think that Venner Step doesn't matter that much in the end game, anyways. There's just far better cards on this like roster, like Berserker, Guardian Angel, and stuff like that. Defensive Step. You just like don't really need to be in that position where you think you need more than one step because you don't even get iframes for vanish stepping to begin with. You just get out of certain moves and certain of attacks and certain like situations. I don't think that this is kind of the route to go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell down, down below. Stay notified in all future videos. Uh, you know, this is just going to be one of those big videos that I just kind of like edited a little more than normal. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Take it easy and peace out.